Hello, welcome to this review of uh, Banzai, Age of the Country at War. Now, this is by uh, 2D6 Wargaming, as you can see there, uh, or Robert Fellows. A um, bit of history, uh, you may remember that a while back there was a Kickstarter for uh, Robert's game, or rulebook. Uh, I backed it and I did a few videos on the channel about it, and because uh, it's really good, do you know what I mean? <laughs> but anyway, that's my view. Um, but it is good. Now, the Kickstarter actually failed, so it failed to fund, so uh, he's funded it all himself and he's got it up to up, up, up and now published. Um, and I, to be honest, it's a beautiful book. I mean, uh, he sent me a pre release copy to have a look at. Um, the proper full final release, I think, was released on the 22nd, which was last Friday. Um, but I've read through it and I'm really, really impressed. It's a really nice, simple, uh, yeah, simple. It is fairly straightforward and simple. I mean, you know, there's, there's a bit of maths to do and there's a bit of thinking to do, but that's what you want, isn't it, really? A bit of thinking. Um, anyway, so just to kick off, obviously, um, like I said, the the book itself, the, the, the actual quality of it is superb. Um, it's brilliant. The <coughs> um, start off with basing. Obviously, the basing is important. It's aimed primarily at six millimeter, but you can play it at three and ten. You'd be pushing it, I think, at fifteen, but and above. But you can have a go if you like. Um, it's just a case of it, the, the whole thing is worked on base sizes. Uh, there are two standard base sizes. There's a 30 by 60 base and a 20 by 40 base. I think it's 20 by 40 or is it 20 by 30. I can't remember off the top of my head, but the um, the base sizes that, that, that I'm working in are 60 by 30, so the large base sizes, because it looks more impressive. Um, and all, the, all of the uh, movement and the measuring is done in base length, uh, base widths. Um, so, you know, uh, a 15 millimeter, I think you might struggle to make it look as impressive. But anyway, there you go. That's my view. Um, how you work, how the game works, it's a turn-based game. So uh, it's a turnabout alternate sort of affair. You roll for initiative. Uh, the player with the initiative places down his first order, and then the the next player places down their first order, and the, it goes round. You know, so you play. You know, everybody, everybody places their first orders. Everybody places their second orders. Everybody places their third orders. That's how um, the game is played, which I think adds quite a nice little twist, because as orders are enacted, it's going to have an effect on other people's orders. Some people may find themselves in a position where they thought, "Oh, I never knew that that, that would happen," or damn, I can't actually carry out my order anymore, which is pretty much how the world works. I'm just going to stick the power adapter into the camera. One second. Phew, and we're back. Good power. I just noticed the flashing light come up in the corner then. How professional. Um, well, we're on the subject of orders. Um, each army is allowed a certain amount of uh, what are called messengers. So I think, I think it may be two messengers per, per army. And what a messenger does is it guarantees that an order will be carried out. Now, you place your messenger behind a unit that you want the order to make to to to, to happen. Everybody, every other base that hasn't got a messenger by it has to roll against um, the order's interpretation table before they can carry out their order anyway. So um, that can so they just roll two d six, consult the table. Now that means that the order may not be may not be carried out or misinterpreted, it may be carried out correctly, or in really bad occasions, the unit will suddenly just rout and run off and leave the table. So that adds a sort of um, dynamic to the game of, 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 of um, what's the word I'm looking for? Mishappenings, as it were, you know, the, the sort of uncertainty of, 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 of things and uh, confusion and you know, randomness that can happen. The other uh, thing that I haven't mentioned yet, which I should do really, is that there's options to, to play weather and period of year, which also has an effect 
on movement and morale and all sorts of stuff, which is really cool. It's a nice little idea. So if you're campaigning, um, that could that could come in handy. So anyway, that's that's a bit brief little thing about orders. Now, the thing that I really like about this is the way in which you construct your armies. Now, there is a um, at the back of the book, we have information about each clan, right? Um, well, not each clan. I think it's eight clans and a, and a rebellious lot. Um, so each of these clans come from different parts of Japan. And they have different sort of buffs to them. Um, for example, the Oda army, or Uda army, uh, from central Japan. They have um, an affinity with Teppo troops, right? So they have an advantage in the fact that their default troops are Aquibus firers. So anyway, what you do when you when you go to build an army is you decide between yourselves uh, how many bases you're going to take. And so, so say you want to, so, so say you decide on ten. So, you, so by default, everybody's going to take ten bases. Then you roll 2d6, and that'll give you a random number, obviously between 2 and 12. And that means that you can add that many number of bases to your list. So say you roll 6, that means you've got 16 bases. If you roll 5, you've got 15. If you roll 12, you can have 22. So it gives a sort of... Uh, uncertainty about the amount of troops that you're going to face, which is what happened, because what happened is that the lord of the area would sort of call his men to arms, and he, because he didn't have standing armies, so he had to deal with, he had to use what turned up, and that's the sort of, um, sort of how you get people to turn up. So you've got your standard definite troops, which are in your starting unit, so for, for example, you've got a command unit, uh, a general um, samurai mounted unit, and a uh, Teppo unit for this particular yeah. army. Others may just have uh, a general, uh, a command unit, a general, Yari, or whatever, and that's and, you, and that's what you take, right, as default. So those three, so your, your default choices are already taken. Then you roll on the army construction table to the amount of rolls that you've got. So if you've got 15 rolls, you've already got three slots filled, so you would then roll another 12 times. Now, each troop unit has some, you can have a limitless, others have limits. So, for example, say you want to take, we'll just carry on with Teppo. Um, you might have only, your army might only be allowed two Teppo units. You've already taken one here. Okay, I'm, I'm winging this, by the way, because I haven't got my glasses on because I can't see this. Um, this, this is all coming from memory. So you might only be able to take two Teppo units. So you roll, your roll determines that you can take another Teppo unit. So now you've got two units, which is your army maximum. Okay. If your next roll happens and you get another Teppo unit, unfortunately you can't take that. So you get null for that one. So you're now down to 14 bases and, it, and so it goes. So I like that idea as well. I think that's really good. And in fact, that's something that I use in my campaign rules is the fact that attrition and randomness about armies moving from one point to another is going to determine the state, quality and the amount of troops that are ready to take the field when they arrive. And this little system here accomplishes that in my opinion. It's a really nice way to do it. So you start off, you say you're going to take, you've got 10 bases by default, you roll, get some randomness which can give you some more bases you roll again, and if you have gone beyond the maximum of troop type allowed, you can't take that. You, you basically lose that roll. It's null and voided, and you have to roll again for the next option. So it, it just adds more and more randomness, which I really, really, really like, because it gives that sort of um, uncertainty about everything. And what it means is that you can't buff up your troops and play... Uh, in advance of the game, if you see what I mean, because you turn up, you put your call out, you roll on your troop building tables, 
you do all of that, and that's what you dealt with, that's the army you dealt with. Then on the field, of course, you've got this opportunity to have certain orders carried out. You can orders can fail, which adds even more confusion and randomness to the whole thing. So you've really got to think tactically at some point. Now, what also is included in the book is a little brief sort of overview. This is the rather oh, lovely diagram of um, Japanese battle tactics. And each one goes through and it gives you a quick overview of how the Japanese approach the art of war. And it was an art, let's, let's not take any uh, joke about it here, but they, they had very, very set out ways of doing things. And it makes it, makes it look, I mean, like I say, when I get my army painted, I'm gonna be trying out some of these because they're really, it looks really, really interesting. It's a completely different way of battling um, than in the, in the Western world. So uh, it does look very, 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 very interesting indeed. Um, overall, like I say, it's a very, very nice looking book, beautifully illustrated. Uh, the rules are very, very straightforward. Um, everything that you need to play is in the book. Um, I'll show you quickly at the back. We have the various uh, rulers that you'll need and all the tokens. Now if you don't want to destroy your book, uh, there is a, a link where you can go uh, on the, I think, is it the War Games Vault? Um, I'm not certain, but all the, all the relevant links will be down below um, where you can go and download those from and uh, print them out and mount them on card and use them to your delight. Um, you can buy the book from the War Games Vault as well. I'll put the link in below. Prices depending on... Uh, I don't actually know the prices <laughs> off the top of my head. I think it's about £16 for the softback version and um, a little bit more for the hardback version. Um, plus postage, of course. And, um, yeah, it's really, really good. I just think you've done an absolutely fantastic job. Um, one of the things that I want to do is I want to set up a Banzai group on My Wargaming Life, which uh, I'll talk to Robert about, and if it so happens, a link will appear somewhere up here uh, in a bit, and um, we'll go and talk more about Banzai there. I am currently um, starting my troops for Banzai. There you go. That's the first look of uh, some Yari that I'm just doing, and I've got uh, eight more bases to do, um, which will give me a good selection um, of Yari. I've got loads of other stuff that I need to get painted, and I'll be doing a series through the summer about it, so um, look out for that. Each individual troop type, I'm going to go through each individual troop type, paint them up, base them up, and uh, we'll discuss each one in relationship to the Banzai rules, so that'll be cool. Um, so yeah, what more can I say? I just think I am I am really really impressed. It's an absolutely superb little set of rules. Robert, well done mate. That's I'm really 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 impressed. Oh, that's it then. Thank you very much for watching. There's the book. Relevant links will have appeared all over the place and down below. Um go and support Robert and 2D6 Wargaming. One of the things that is nice about this is, for, is, is that, you know, for a fact, in the credits here, uh, the names are listed in the credits are all members of the community, um, which is really, really nice. Do you know what I mean? So there you go. Banzai. Go support Robert. Get a copy of the book. Play the game. It's brilliant. Six millimeter. Excellent, excellent scale. All right. Thanks very much for watching. Bye. Bye. <laughs>